So I'm gonna give you my grandma's recipe and then we're gonna tweak it. So we're gonna take her recipe and basically upgrade it a bit. And we're gonna give it a bunch more vegetables and a bunch more spices and we're gonna really make it a full meal in a bowl. Hey friends, welcome back to Homesteading Hustle once again. Today we are going to be making soup. So we are part of a really awesome collaboration from Diane at The Canning Nana. Um, she is hosting this collaboration and it is all about soup. So the whole month of November, there's going to be a different channel every day. Some days there'll be two channels posting a new soup recipe. So you're going to not only get a bunch of great ideas for soup, but you're also going to learn about a bunch of other great homesteading and prepping channels that you definitely want to make sure you check out to get the recipes that they're going to provide as well as you know subscribe like and a lot of them if not all of them are going to have a word of the day in their videos and what this word of the day gets you if you comment on their video with this word is an entry in to win a crock pot at the end of the month so Diane is going to be giving away somebody, some lucky person, a crock pot. So definitely make sure you watch as many videos as you can or that you want to within the collaboration. There'll be a playlist in the description down below. Again, make sure you get that word of the day, put it in the comment section, and you are entered to win a crock pot. Who doesn't like free things, right? Today we're going to be making a hamburger soup. That's my soup du jour. Um, and this is actually a recipe, I'm basing it off of my grandma's recipe. So when I was invited to this collaboration, I was like, soup? I don't actually make a ton of soup because my family's not huge into it, but I've been wanting to make this soup because my grandma used to make it. And I really enjoyed it, and it's really a great use up of things that most people just have on hand often. So it's beef, vegetables, some stock, super simple, but really hearty, and just a really tasty, warm treat um, on a, you know, throughout the winter. So coming into November here, we want warm things that we can stick in the crock pot or let sit on the stove all day. This is gonna be a really easy go-to for you. So I'm gonna give you my grandma's recipe and then we're gonna tweak it. So we're gonna take her recipe and basically upgrade it a bit. And we're gonna give it a bunch more vegetables and a bunch more spices and we're gonna really make it a full meal in a bowl. All right, so let me show you or share with you my grandma's recipe. So when I called her up last week, I was like, hey, grandma, I want to make your hamburger soup. And at first she was like, hamburger soup? Like she had made it, she hadn't made it in a while. So she couldn't even think of what was even in it. So she looked it up real quick for me and we found out that it is super duper easy. So her recipe literally calls for burger, onion, a one large can of tomato sauce, three bouillon cubes, Worcestershire, can you say that word? Um, <laughs> and add any veggie, veggies and seasonings that you want. Okay, so we have her recipe. So we're gonna really spruce it up and we're gonna use definitely 100% beef. We're gonna keep our beef really nice and clean. I'm using some, I'm gonna use two pounds that I actually got from Aldi. Um, this is 100% grass fed beef. Um, this is an 85% lean. I prefer a uh, a little bit of fattier cut like this for soup. If you go super lean, you just probably want to add a little more butter and oil to it um, to just make sure you get that fat content because that's flavor. So I'm also going to use a beef broth. Um, if you have and can your own beef broth, that's even better. I have not done that yet, so we're just going to use <laughs> she's noisy a uh, beef broth, and this is an organic one I also got from Aldi. Um, I am going to use my own hand hand canned, home canned, uh, diced tomato, onion, and garlic. Uh, I just canned this actually just earlier this month. So this is good to go. I'm probably going to use this whole quart. I'm also going to use salt and pepper. We're going to use a uh, minced garlic. Um, I just have this huge pre-minced garlic here. We're just going to use this today for sake of time. And we're going to use that Worcestershire sauce. Okay, if you know how to say that, like, I would love to hear it. I think I get it. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I think that's right. We're going to use that. Uh, that gives it a really nice, like, umami flavor. It has that, like, depth of flavor that we want for this soup. So it's not, you know, just beef, just vegetables. we got to have a little bit of something, something in there. And the vegetables we're going to use, we're going to use potatoes, 
onions, celery, and carrots. That's going to be our veg that we want to use. Now, celery, carrot, and onion are actually kind of the base of most soups. That's, those three things together create such a base profile for um, so many dishes and especially soup. And so we're definitely going to have those in there. That added punch of potato is going to give us that, that real thickness, not, not thickness, that like that heaviness that really makes it a meal. So, and obviously my husband loves potatoes, so you got to put potatoes in it if you want him to eat it. <laughs> so we're going to do those. We'll put some rosemary, some basil. If you have parsley on hand, that's a great one with any kind of beef dish. Um, the grassiness is a really great complimentary, but yeah. Okay. So these are going to be my ingredients. Let's get cooking. So we have a large skillet. Uh, this is a cast iron skillet heating over um, about medium heat right now. It's getting nice and hot. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to brown the beef. Um, now when you're browning beef, you're not steaming it. You actually want to give a little color on it because that is where you're going to get flavor. So in order to help aid in that process, we are going to add just like uh, about a tablespoon of butter. Butter brings out the flavor and everything. I'm never shy of a little butter. Uh, we're going to add just a little bit of olive oil. Not too much. Just want to get a nice little coating in the pan here and melt that and then we're going to add in our beef. Now when we're browning the beef, we don't want to make it super fine, like if we were making tacos or something like that. We actually kind of want to keep the ground beef in larger chunks. So definitely want to ground it up, but not super tiny, if that makes any sense. You kind of want some hefty pieces to bite into in your soup. Um, so we're going to go ahead, this is nice and hot, and get these in there, and we're just going to let them sit for a second and get some of that flavor and color to develop on that first side before we start chopping it up. And like I said, color is flavor, and so if you really want to bring out the beefiness of this soup, definitely brown your meat and don't let it just simmer in the soup itself. We're going to cook it beforehand. Okay, so we're definitely getting some color on that underside. Here, I'll show you this one real quick. All right, we're just going to flip this over completely without grinding it up yet. You see how we're getting some color on there? That's going to bring out a beefy flavor in this soup. So once you decide you have some color on each side, then you're going to start grounding it up and then get a little more color on it. And then we're going to just whip the soup all together and it's going to be super great. Uh, we are going to put some chopped, large chopped onions in here. Once this is almost done, we're just going to get some of these onions to sweat out a little bit and just get a little bit of color. Again, we're adding a little bit of depth of flavor. So we'll see that in just a few moments. I'll show you on here. And while we're waiting for this to brown up, we're going to cut the vegetables. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cut up the potatoes here into you know, perfect little bite-sized pieces, little cubes. Uh, you just kind of want your vegetables to be pretty uniform. So we're gonna do the same thing with our potatoes. And we're going to do this also with the onions and the carrots and the celery. Try to get them all similar sizes if you can. Uh, again, it just creates for a nice uniform soup. But however you want to do it works just fine. Okay, so we're definitely getting some color on our beef. It is almost fully cooked. So right now what I'm going to do before I put a little bit of onion in this pan, I'm actually going to take this fat over here, um, all these juices that have come off to the side, and I'm going to put them in our stock pot that we're going to cook our soup in. Um, now this cast iron pan is extremely heavy to lift up, so I'm just going to spoon it out of there. Um, but if you have a light pan and you can just kind of like strain it into there, uh, definitely do that. <laughs> Oops. So I'm just going to take all this, because again you want this fat that is flavor. We're just going to add that to our soup. We want it in there, but we want the pan to be somewhat drier uh, on the drier side before we add our onions in there. So they can actually get a little bit of color as well. So we got most of that out. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit more butter to this spot right here. Kind of just push my beef over to the side. We'll add a little bit of butter there. Let that melt, 
and then we're going to add our onions right there. Now I'm only putting about half of the onions that I've cut up into this spot. We're just going to brown half of them a little bit. We'll put the rest directly in our stock pot. I'm just going to let those sweat out together for just maybe five minutes or so while this continues to cook. These will get a little color and we're going to literally put everything in our stock pot and we're going to just simmer it. It's going to be super easy. Okay, so we have a little bit of color on here. They've started to get a little translucent, which means that they have cooked down. Their sugars are coming out. They are full of flavor right now. Um, our beef is almost fully cooked and that is plenty because it's going to cook even more in the soup. We're just going to go ahead and put all of this stuff in our stock pot with all of our other ingredients right now. So all right, so we're gonna move this pan, slide that one over. We're gonna get all of this goodness into the pan. All right, and we got all that in the pan. Get as much in there as possible. Set that aside. Now we're going to get the other vegetables in. I ended up using two red potatoes, um, about three stalks of celery, two large carrots. Uh, you can use as much or as little vegetable as you want. They're all about the same size. Uh, we have, I did two full onions. I realized that, you know, I'm not the only one eating it, so I should probably not go too crazy on the onion. So we're just going to add that all into our pot. We're going to add in that quart of tomatoes. And those are a diced tomato with onion and garlic. You can just do a plain tomato sauce. You can do diced tomatoes, however you want to do that. I'm going to do probably two two tablespoons of a minced garlic or a diced garlic. Uh, if you have fresh garlic, go ahead and slice that up or however you want that to go in there. We're going to do that Worcestershire sauce and we're probably going to do about two tablespoons of this as well. I don't measure everything. I just kind of go off of feel and smell. Get some salt and pepper in there. I just have a uh, Himalayan pink salt here, whatever you want to use. You always want definitely salt in soup, otherwise the flavor really falls flat. Um, so you can always add more later. So if you want to start with a little bit, make sure you don't overdo it. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So if you go too much right away, you're going to be SOL <laughs> if you've added too much. So, all right, give that a mix. Now we're gonna add in our liquid. We're gonna do, I have a full 32 ounces here of beef broth, and we're gonna add this whole thing in to this soup. Now what I'm also gonna do is, I don't think I'm gonna use a whole nother thing of beef broth. I think what I'm gonna do, we're gonna fill this container up with water and I'll just kind of add it as we go. So I'll probably add about half more water in here and then we'll see if we need more broth as we're cooking. I'll continue to add more in. Again, depending on how broth you like it, if you like it a little more like a stew, a little more like a, like a really liquidy soup, uh, this is complete preference. All right, here's some of that water. about half right there. And we're going to add in a few seasonings. So I have some basil here that was from our garden that we had dried out. I have about a teaspoon and a half. That's probably actually about a tablespoon. Uh, and this has been dried and so whenever you have dried herbs you want to rub it in your hands as you're putting it in there and that really wakes up the flavor and it makes it really aromatic. So I put some basil in there 
We'll do a little rosemary, but the same thing. And these are all complete preference. So if you don't like these spices, use whatever spices you do like. Like, get some rosemary in there. We have some dried parsley here. All right, give that a stir. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this soup just up to a boil and then we're going to cover it and let it simmer for about an hour or so. Um, now you want everything to be fully cooked in there and at that point you can really test for seasonings. If you need to add more salt, more pepper, uh, whatever you need to add to make it your flavor profile that you like, uh, that's when you would add that after it cooks for a little while. Cooking and heat brings out flavors, so you don't want to just judge on a cold temp soup. Wait till it comes up to temp, then test it. All right, so we're gonna let this sit, bring it up to a boil, and I'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, so we let the soup simmer for about 45 minutes, and then I wanted to make sure that we weren't overcooking the vegetables. So I checked the carrots just to make sure they were just cooked, like a little bit tender still, and they were perfect after 45 minutes of simmering. So. Uh, I just turned off the stove and let the soup just kind of hang out by itself. And that's when the flavors are really going to develop in any kind of soup. And then you want to, as it cools off, then you want to start tasting it and making sure that your um, level of salt and seasonings are there. And really honestly, I actually don't think it needs any more salt. Um, but depending on what ingredients you use, you may or may not want to add more at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and dish this soup up. It turned out so beautiful and we're going to top it with some freshly grated parmesan cheese and some fresh herbs we're going to use just basil today parsley is always great when it comes to beef uh, if you have parsley on hand um, i'm just going to use a little bit of basil and the parmesan and i'll serve it alongside some focaccia i do have some sourdough focaccia coming out in just a little bit and so yeah that's dinner and easy peasy seriously the ingredients in this were something that a lot of people just ha have on hand. So it's nothing crazy, just keep it simple. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm gonna give you the word of the day for this video. So like I said at the beginning, if you wanna be entered in the drawing for a free crock pot, they're watching a movie back there. <laughs> if you wanna be entered in the drawing for a free crock pot, uh, definitely comment below the word hustle. Just like the name of my channel, A Homesteading Hustle, just type in HUSTLE and put it in all caps so that we can make sure we see it and don't miss it. Uh, that's going to be the word of the day from my video today. So go ahead, make this soup. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to check out the playlist with all the other channels and great uh, recipes that are not only have already been posted, but are coming up for the whole month of November. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll dish this up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.